Hey, thanks for stopping by the shop this week. I'm Corey, this is Mad Rat Garage, and that's Mazmad. My 1956 Chevy Nomad, that used to be my mom's. This week I take a little break from the budget power steering upgrade we were doing to work on the speedometer, because my OCD couldn't take it anymore, staring at that right in front of me, and I needed to take a break from the power steering. We pull out the speedometer, find out why it was making so much noise and why it was binding up, take it apart, give you guys a chance to look at the inside in case this is a problem you're working on and you're just scared because you're not sure what you're getting into, show you what the wires are on the back, pulling it out of the dash, taking it all apart. The trick with the Tri-5s, I don't know whether other years Chevy did it or anybody else did it, but I know five, six, and seven, there's a trick to lubing them that dries out. 90% of the times the problem why they're squealing, howling, and, and making a whole bunch of noise. We're gonna check that first give that a whirl and see what's going on then we clean it polish it put it all back together stick her back in the dash so you can see how it's done so stick around till the end of the video to see what happened speedometer refurbishing in a 1956 chevy nomad we lovingly call maz mad check it out let's get after it What we're gonna do today, we're back on Mozmad, of course. And I'm gonna try to get that, uh, I left the flashlight in there, so. Ah, uh, squeeze in here. I'm gonna try to get this. Speedometer out. Oh, you saw us get that far dash and then there's two screws down there two screws up there and then this should come out and give me access to what's back there Let's see if we can get that speedometer working lubed up Working properly, hasn't been hooked up in God knows how many years. I know my dad replaced the cable once and it did the same thing. So, and I probably mentioned this earlier, but that was a couple days ago. So I'm just gonna mention it again in case I didn't. Uh, Flashback. And what I'm gonna do while I'm in here, cause uh, if you see this, that is a speedo cable. <laughs> Let me tell you about that speedo cable. We were on a trip when I was a kid. When I was a kid. Oh, I was probably 15, so. More than 30 years ago, we were on a trip. We were out of town. I might have even been coming back from one of the Nomad Nationals when I was like 14, 15 years old. And all of a sudden, the Speedo just started howling. And uh, while Dad was driving, he reached under there and undid the Speedo cable, and then that's been it. There hasn't been one since. Um, I think he replaced the cable, and it still did it, which means it wasn't the cable, it was the speedometer. 2,000 years later. They didn't have replacements back then. It was finding somebody who had one for sale, not knowing what you were gonna get. Oh, buying a replacement wasn't an option. eBay wasn't real prevalent back then. So it's not like it was easy to find if you weren't, uh, if you didn't have somebody to find one. A little easier now, but I think they get a couple 300 bucks just for the Speedo unit itself. And if we don't have to spend it, because we can do a little work and make it happen. Try to make it happen without scratching anything. Oh. 
That'll give me a good chance to really clean this up good. I'm not missing a screw. I mean, I don't feel a screw in there. No. I don't have any plastic pry bars. I really don't want to risk scratching the shit out of anything, so let's try lightly and... There we go. It's just a nice tight fit, I guess. I feel it moving ever so lightly. I just don't want to dent any of our trim here. Scratch nothing. Dad nabbit. No scratching the paint. Alright. That feels loosened. So what it looks like behind. Again, that's the Speedo. It's very tight. It needs to be looser than that. Um, not as bad as I thought, though. That's already unhooked. That's where the Speedo cable goes. Right here. And then these are all just for the bulbs and the gauges. There's your two gauges. High beam, low beam. And lights. So... And these light sockets usually just are lightly pressed in. See that? Little spring clips. So, good video. Let's see so I can come back and reference this if I get lost. Dark blue, gray, brown, pink, white, green, lower. White upper. Green gauge. Pink. Gray. Gray is a common, like a ground really, usually. Huh, I could be wrong on that. Another gray, so then blue, baby blue. Okay, let's remember that. And then there's, oh, there's some down below there. Brown. Those are idiot lights, I think. Brown with dark blue. Brown with brown. I'll unplug those and uh, get this out of here. And we'll do some cleaning on it. And get some greasing and some lubing. And we'll see you over at the bench. Try to pull them out and lay them where they go back in so I can remember them too. But that doesn't always happen, so. Instrument cluster light. Long lower gray. Usually the grayer are, uh, yes, exactly. So, usually the gray that I was saying there, um, there's one here, there's one here, instrument cluster light. So those three, and down here, those are usually your uh, dash lights. That's what I was trying to think of. They're all the same color, they're all gray. The colors, these are blinkers. And then, uh, idiot light, generator, oil light, you know. And then that's temperature and gas, so, and blinkers. 
got it. Oh, I was going to take it to the bench, but I got a spot right here and it's closer to the toolbox. So with the table here, there's the car, there's the table, there's this. So uh, let me just, for those of you who have never played around with one of these, I do this to a lot of my cars that I get um, over time. Some of them easier to do right away. Some of them, it uh, takes me a while to get to them like this one and mainly because I'm not driving it. And it's, it's basically in really good shape. Um, you want more information, I've got that 84C10 video where I totally disassembled the gauge cluster, repainted, recleaned it all up. I mean, took it from looking like hell to looking like brand new. And it doesn't take much. Um, like this you'll see, let me turn you around. If you look close, you see the water spots underneath there? That's just age, right? I'll see if I can clean those up. The dots for the gas are browned over. Should be white like that. I don't know if the needle was ever orange. I'll have to look into that. But you can see the chrome is scratched from yours and just dirty. So what I'm gonna do, first and foremost, this cover has to come off because this is our place we need to oil. That has a little brass plug in it, like a freeze plug on a motor, but it's tiny. Pop that out and behind that, there is a felt piece that runs on the shaft here. And this doesn't, oh, there's the noise, I just heard it. Can you hear that? That might be deeper in. But I'm gonna start here. And to start here, this has to come off. And if this is coming off from here, I can take the whole cover off. And then every individual piece will come out. And that'll give me a chance to clean the glass on both sides, polish it if I have to, clean those dots up. Um, just give it an overall good cleaning. And if I've got this apart down to just the speedo with this off, and yeah, you can hear that. Actually sounds like it's coming from deeper, but we'll see. This needs to be done no matter what. It's the first place. Always start with the simplest thing first. Um, the most obvious simple thing first. That's what we're doing with that. Pop that out. We'll get the little felt out. I'll video it and show you. And uh, we'll throw some brake clean in there to clean out all the old dried up grease and oil. And then we'll rehydrate the wick with some oil. And then we'll put that freeze plug back in and that should really free this up quite a bit. Let me see if I can show you this. So I'm gonna try to spin. Yeah, see that? That should, I mean, just with that quick spin that I'm doing, if this was working properly and greased well, that would jump up 20, 30 miles an hour. And I can't, oh, there's, there was one. But it should be easy, and it's not. So let's take that apart and see what we got. I need a flathead. Flathead should get us all up. And because I'm putting this right back together quickly, what I do, I'm taking this one out, top left. I'm just gonna set that screw up here, left. I'll kind of make a miniature uh, diagram, smaller on the table. Okay, left, center, right, and then it'll be the bottom three. Not that on this one that, that it matters too much. They look like they're all the same, but you never know. Sometimes you run into one or two that are a hair longer and in a different orientation, you know? So it's just safe to do it that way. Okay, there we go. Not much to it. So I can be able to clean this up and if I have to repaint them, I can do that. Here's your blinkers, they're in behind these little 
cardboard tubes. So when you put it back together, you want to make sure that those are aimed nice and straight the way you want them to go. And then you can see on the back here, there's a lot of uh, discoloration. That's just from humidity and stuff over the years and it's gotten onto this. You gotta be real careful cleaning this stuff. The, the black paint that's on there, it's, it's kind of touchy. I know the white paint really is. So I gotta think that through. Because if I clean that, I gotta have something really gentle to clean that. Or it might uh, completely wipe it off. this sitting on here for right now because I do have to there's little pins here too that this lines up on so it's lines up easy you can see both of these gauges come out individually if you need to change them all the gauges come out individually but it's just two screws two screws pops right out pops right out um, five more screws takes this cover off do I need to take the cover off I think that Speedo is held just by those two. Never done one of these before, guys. Um, and what I mean is, I've done a bunch of speedometers. Different makes and models. I've never done the Tri-5 ones. So it's always good just to kind of look through. The older age are different. You know, obviously from 50s to 60s, things change. But it's still pretty much the same, if that makes any sense. You just have to look and see what's specific to the model and year you're looking at. Well, let me loosen those up and see if that drops down at all. Without taking it all the way, just to see what kind of looseness we get out of it. The isolators and everything for this are pretty good shape, yet. Yeah. All busted up and rotted. There it comes. All right. Need to find a way to grab that. And, not... and there's your tubes for the oil, the brights, the generator. So, yeah. Okay. There you go. Silk screened deal. The fun part with this, with me looking at this, is uh, I don't want to mess any of this up. I don't want to remove that if I don't have to. I'd like to set it down. Um, let me see how hard this. There's our little brass freeze plug. And what I can do once I get that lubed, once I get that out, you can see in here, these are your gears for your odometer. They're all tied together. So sometimes when these get dry, things don't work the same. The needle really moves pretty, pretty nice. So that ain't all caught up. Um, you can see there's two screws here, one here, one here, that this plate would come off. With that plate off, there's two screws on the back side there and there. This is your odometer wheel, and that would come off. And you'd be with the speedometer unit itself, and there's uh, three screws that hold that cover in, and then you've got your magnetic weight in there, and that's all it is. This just spins, and because of the magnetic resistance, this gets pulled up. It's not actually attached to anything. I don't know how the calibration or any of that works. I just, this is one of those things, I know how it works. I don't know why it works. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Uh, you can see back in the old days how easy it would be just to reset the odometer, you know, for whatever you want. I'm not gonna mess with it because it doesn't matter. And those are the original miles from the vehicle. It might be 23,000, it might be 123,000. Probably 123,000, she's saying. 
but we'll leave it because it's fine. And I might just gently clean this off when I'm done. Debate on, it doesn't look like this was ever painted orange. They were in 57, I don't know in 56. I have the orange paint. Do I want to paint it and paint the other ones? I'll look into that and see. But for right now, find a safe way to hold this and not damage anything. And see. Well, shit. <laughs> I barely even pried on that and it came right to flip out. And I felt it hit my shoulder. That tiny little son of a bitch. <sighs> wow. I did not expect that to come out that easy. And that, that thing's tiny and oh gee. Am I going to find it on this with all the little... Hit my shoulder. Oh, are you kidding me? I found it. I better buy a lottery ticket. Holy crap, holy. Just a little freeze plug, just like in the side of a motor. Put that up there. I can't believe I found it that quick. Holy crap, holy. Well, is our little wick gonna come out that easy? <coughs> I doubt it. I need a little pick for that. Maybe one of these will work. I buy these little sets at the swap meets when you go, they're like three bucks. They're all dental picks. Um, perfect for stuff like this. I don't use them that often, but for two bucks to have them around in your toolbox. Um, I start to bend one. This is the newest one I've got. You start to bend one or get one all messed up. Next time you're at the damn swap, you just pick up another pack for that cheap. But let's see here. I'm going to flick this one and ruin my luck. End up flicking this one. Never find it again. It looks like a piece of dirt in here. Oh, kind of coming out. Supposedly you can buy these new. There it is. It's like the tip of a, of a marker. See that? It's like the felt tip of a marker that you, you push to get paint and all that stuff down. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty dry, really dry. And all this does is, is it holds a lubricating oil and just slowly wicks it onto the shaft so that it always stays lubed while well, 60 years old. Dry it out. Doesn't stink. So, I'm told the best thing to do is some brake clean to get the old gunk gunk out. Little FYI, you do not want to get brake clean on any of your painted surfaces. It'll stain. And then I'm taking it apart and painting it. So be gingerly, try to keep that away. Don't just blast at it, give it a little, I'm not gonna force it out. I don't wanna get blasted in the face with it. So you gotta try that soft touch. Get that in there and do a little twist to it. Oh, it's already freeing up a little bit. clean spot. We'll see if anything can run out. If I can get a good enough stream going that I can run it out without blasting a craziness. Oh. So 
so much better already. I'm just spinning it, letting that stuff work through. Seeing what kind of crud this stuff can sit and break up. Some brown black stuff there. Oh. There it went. You hear any crud? I don't hear any crud. I don't see any crud anymore either. There was a chunk in here. Must be what finally let loose. Oh, so much nicer. Already so much nicer. I'm just gonna use a little motor oil. So, what I'm doing here, I put a little motor oil in the cap. It's funny, the end that's been riding on the speedometer is like glass. All those years of spinning. So I think I'm gonna put it back in upside down because this end is still supple. I drop it in there, I know how to fish it out, but. Do. Use that. Soak up some and drip some in there. Soak up some. Let it drip in there. Oh, butter. Butter. That's wonderful. Drop a couple more drops in there. It's a bit of a cavity in there, so I'd like to kind of fill it. It's gonna sit down in here as well. Oh, it's getting better. Wonderful. Huh. And we'll just feed that little guy in there. Feel it bottom out a little bit. Suck the excess off the top there a little bit. Oh yeah, it's all supple now. So there it is in there. See a little bit of oil on the top. And then we'll take that little freeze plug guy. was just a hair below. Oh, there we go. Oh, let's see what it feels like. Oh. And I don't feel, and I don't hear, I don't feel any resistance, and I don't hear that noise. So that must have been all I needed. Job one done. That didn't take but a total of a half hour to get it out, get it apart, get it greased and back together. Not too bad. Help that we had, uh, Helps we had the uh, 
steering column already down. You want to do that. If you're not taking the steering column out, you definitely want to lower it about those two nuts we took out earlier that allow the steering column to drop out. You want to take those two nuts down to maybe one or two threads worth of turn so that that's as far down. And that way you have less of a chance of the bottom of this scratching your steering column and all that when you're wiggling it out. But we already had ours dropped, so that was part of it. Back to cleaning. Okay. Got a fresh microfiber. I'm gonna fold it, give me a little corner like that around my finger. I like the Foman spray glass cleaner. Give it a little bit, get it into the fibers, shake off the excess. You don't want it soaking wet. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clean this a little bit. Because the corners are got crud in them. And you probably think I'm nuts. Comment down below, you know, what you think of all this. Um, me, the things that are really important to me on my vehicles, I like patina, right? I, because it's, takes years to make them look that way, for nature to make them look that way. I don't care, you know, um, $10,000 paint job doesn't make me like the car or enjoy it any better. But what my biggest thing is, I like my interiors as nice as I can get them. They don't, I don't spend the big bucks, but when you're looking at a speedometer and you can see a bug behind the glass, or you can see a bunch of dust behind the glass or a bunch of water spots behind the glass. And you're like, God, it just looks old. And all it takes is a little elbow grease, a little time, a few moments, because you already have it apart. When you're driving down the road and your speedometer's working and it looks brand new, I'm looking at that for hundreds of miles, thousands of miles, as long as you own the vehicle. Thousands of miles a year, hopefully. And now, it's a pleasure to look at. It doesn't look old and dilapidated. This stuff just takes time, guys. It doesn't take money. I don't know if that's an improvement to you guys or not, but dust-free. Look at a little bit I got on there. Nooks and crannies are clean. 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 This is all stuff that you can see. So these things push when you clean them. So you got to kind of hold them just to get the dust off. At least the lettering's on the back side. So I, I'm not going to wipe any of that off. But it's an improvement, isn't it, guys? Looks fresh. Okay. Set that safely out of the side. We know we got her good and clean. Now this, I'm worried. I'm gonna be real careful. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna even gonna put, I'm just gonna use the back side of what's still wet so that it's really diluted. There's some, uh, these marks up here are from the screen printers. So they can line up the gauges and when they were screen printing the graphics. I'm gonna rub those first just to see if they come off. Nope. I don't know why the gas gauges always turn. I mean, maybe this one was replaced at one time, but it always seems like the gas gauges are the ones that have the weird discoloration going on. I'm gonna leave it alone. I could get myself in a bit of trouble trying too hard on that. Let me find out this 
inside, get the dust off. It's pretty clean in here. It's pretty clean. But this yellow, or yellow, jeez, what am I colorblind? Looking at that. This pale green is what reflects the light that comes in from here, from here, from here, and from down here. It reflects the light around and you kind of get a greenish glow of your dash. It's, you, you know you got white lights. I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't look like a green light by any means. But uh, you kind of get this neat, one thing I've always liked about the 50s Aeros cars, you just kind of get this greenish glow about the dash. And this is why. All right, well, I don't have, you know what, you know what I can do? I got white spray paint. All right, so I did. I have a can of that Rust-Oleum. Shot that into a little cup. Got it all with my finger. I got these little detail brushes. Easy Dabber by Easy Mix. Um, I got a little Q-tip end plastic and it's not absorbing Q-tip end, if that makes any sense bristles so it holds paint but it doesn't like soak up paint Does that makes they're, they're great for doing touch-up jobs but see that just a little bit in there brace my hand on the table yeah Well, they ain't perfectly round. But at a quick glance, now they're visible. Not too bad if I do say so myself. And I do, I say so myself. I just heard myself say so myself. So, perfect? No, we don't do perfect. <laughs> I say a lot. Is it perfect? No, we don't do perfect. I say that a lot. It's my thing. And here's why. Here's my philosophy behind that. I owned a business years and years ago, detailing cars. In my business, I dealt with used car dealers and I did detail work. And I did paint touch up on vehicles, rock chips. So here's the thing. Fix those rock chips. Was it perfect? Yeah, I tried doing retail customers with that business. And the problem with that is, you know the chips there, right? So you'd come to me and you'd be like, hey, I got all these rock chips in my hood. And you'd know where they're all at because you like your car and you're, they're bugging you. And I'd fix them. And then you'd come back and go, well, I can still see it. Why isn't it completely gone? Well not bare metal anymore it's just paint in the chip the way we you know the way I did it didn't get all it's not like dabbing it on and leaving it it's a process but it would leave it in the chip and it, it protects the rust from happening and from anything getting worse but because you know it's there you're always gonna know it's there so I stopped doing retail because I was doing it for the car dealers and they'd bring in something used number one you go to buy a car you don't know it's there if you can't see it. So you don't know to go look. Two, you don't know if it was there before from the previous owner. What are you gonna do about it? So the car dealers loved me because I'd take a car that was an eyesore with a bunch of rock chips in the hood and I'd make, I'd make them 90% better. But for somebody coming in fresh, never seen the car, they couldn't even tell that I was there. They might be able to see one or two of the bigger ones, but they didn't see the other 50 that got touched up. So that's where my thing comes from. Do I do perfect? No, I don't do perfect. I do good enough. 
Same thing with this. If you didn't know I did that, you'd never even know to look to see if I did it perfect or not. Right? You sit in the driver's seat and look, and you're not gonna look close. You have to look close to see those ain't perfectly round. Pause it, look, it's not perfect. But at a quick glance, would anybody, would, would, you, ever, would you ever know? No, you wouldn't. So that's what I say with a lot of this stuff. You're seeing me work on it. You're seeing things change. You're, you know, and you know to look and go, oh, well, you know, it's not, couldn't you, maybe. But if you walked in and saw the end product and looked around and didn't know what it looked like before, you'd be happy with it. That's why I don't, I, I don't have a business. I don't work for people. I work on my own stuff. Or I work on something that I'm going to flip and sell. You're here seeing it, the done end product. And that's all that matters. You happy with it? Yeah, good. That's what you're buying. That's what it is. So that's my Rambletron. A little explanation of why I say that. You know, some people are like, oh, you're a hack. Well, that's fine. You can think that way. Um, you know, it could be a hack for saying I don't do perfect. I do good enough. That might be a hacky thing. But I'll tell you one thing, hacky or not, is it an improvement over what was there? Yes. I'm not Dave Kindig. I don't, you know, I don't have his shop and his tools and his equipment and his, uh, you know, unlimited budget from his customers. doing is putting the two screws back in sorry it's just the way I have to hold it to be able to hold the speedo there and and hold the, the case at the same time unfortunately can't see it from where you're at and my camera's base has to have metal and it's sitting on a pulley <laughs> okay so what I was doing these two screws got a little isolators on them they're all back together there okay I'll wipe the rest of this down Where was I? Oh, yeah, if I was building $100,000 cars, trust me, I can do perfect if I have the time, the budget, the equipment, and the place to do it. Anybody can do it. Well, I shouldn't say anybody, but a lot of people can do it. perfect. But my cars, my projects, my stuff are not $100,000 builds. They're dailies, well not dailies, but they're, they're drivers that get drove to shows, that get, uh, get used and enjoyed, and I make them as nice as I can with what I got. That's why everything I, I got and do is on a budget. And not for nothing, when I was making really good money and had a bunch of money, uh, I still did stuff on a budget. I don't, I can't justify, I don't, how do I explain this? I haven't had to put this into words in a long time. Um, personally, I'm not going to get any more enjoyment out of that vehicle if it was flawless. Because I, I don't I don't build stuff for the oh wow that's amazing look at what you got it's a hundred thousand dollar car and oh boy look at I don't care about that what I care about is showing up with something and, and people come up and go wow that's really cool and it, it's not perfect but yeah that's cool no yeah, hey hey you're driving a fifty six Nomad that's cool oh yeah, you got a sixty four C ten that's all done up rat rod style that's cool I get just as much enjoyment out of that as you know it doesn't have to have a hundred thousand dollar price tag. And now they should yours. It should be what you want, how you want it. And that's enough. Set that aside for now. I want to clean this. 
This is the face behind the glass and there's those marks from years of moisture and humidity and whatever. So fingers crossed that I don't wipe off the black. But if I do, and the only reason it's fingers crossed is because I don't wanna have to repaint it. It's just gonna be more time. But I will. Oh, well, that's pretty good. I think the paint in the 50s is a lot better than the stuff in the 70s and 80s. This is uh, coming right off. Shining right up. What I may or may not do. I don't know. Now that it's dry, it's not. <laughs> um, eh, it's much gooder, but it ain't. It ain't fixed, so. All right, that means I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna shoot some black on it. Cause there's nothing I like more than a really nice Speedo. All these blotches bug me and they show up in the sun. So next time you see it, paint it. Improved it a lot, but didn't work. You can even still see, I don't know if you can, if I can make it, but uh, especially on this side, right through here, if you can see that, the numbers from the glass. Okay, the numbers are etched on the glass for the Speedo. And from the years of the sun hitting it, you can see the numbers from the shadow. And it's not coming off. So, probably just run a piece of uh, some uh, scotch bright over it, scuff it up, dust it with some uh, matte black, and uh, call her good. This is pla plexiglass, it's not glass glass. So I can take this and all the years of cleaning it on that side, I don't know, in the light, if you can tell, it's all got cobwebbing scratches, right? Well, backside will clean up nice, just with some glass cleaner, right? But the front, I'll use a headlight restorer. The paint and everything's on the back side. So the front here is completely do whatever you want. So I'll buff that and show you the end result. And then I'm gonna, while the glass is out, while the plexiglass is out, I'm gonna run my little buffer over all this that should clean all the chrome up. And we'll show you the end result. So red scotch bright for scuffing paint. Scuff this up so it holds. What are the, I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, what do the Europeans call it? Key in it? Uh, key the paint so it'll stick. Heat up, just take it off the shine, make it dull. Hang it on my little, my little paint rack. Rust-Oleum, Canyon Black. I finally broke down and bought one of these mixer deals. I heard from another YouTuber that they work pretty good for uh, the paint qualities much better when it comes out of it, so we will see. That should be good enough. Twisty McTwisterson. that. 
Seems to come out a lot better. Oh yeah. That looks pretty good. Comes out of the can way better. Alrighty then. You use this for headlights. It's a whole kit. This is the final polish. Comes with this ball. I'm gonna do the face of this. A little at a time. A little trick always have the whatever you're doing spinning off what you're doing because if it's spinning you can catch the edge flip this right out of your hand crack it whatever so always try to have it spinning off crazy with this we're just doing enough to get these uh, scratches out well that scratching's a lot better That's as hard as I'm going to go at it. A lot clearer. Is it perfect? No. It's 60 years old. You don't want to do too much to this old plastic. You know, you're putting heat in it. And uh, you're holding it. Putting pressure in places that hasn't had pressure in 60 years. So again, my thought is on this, I could buy a new one. I don't know what the price is. Getting it cleaned up, buffed out a little bit better, make it nicer. It fits the patina. I'm looking at a nice, clean, fresh looking dash. Not perfect, doesn't have to be. It just needs to be as perfect as I can get. I can look at it and go, I already went through and cleaned it all. That little spot right there didn't come out, it didn't come out. I did my best. Or I can spend 150 bucks on a new lens, you know, whatever they are, because the Tri-5 Chevys are ridiculous in price for all the parts. Doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it's good. Paint's still good. It ain't all cracked. It's a lot better than when we started. I'm happy with that. Ah, crap. Take that back out. I want to run the buffer a bit. I don't know if it picks up on there. All the years of... sitting chrome's good it's just got corrosion on it i mean mom and dad cleaned them quite often but the last few years before i got it and it's been this sits on top of the column it's the cover for that okay what shape that's in all right so how'd we do shiny That's got a lot of scratches on it from over the years, but it's shiny. There it was, right? And again, if I didn't show you, you'd see it in there all shiny. You wouldn't think anything of it. You'd be like, that's just how it is. It's not, oh, you could have done better. 
So people always worry about when they do something and it's not perfect. They worry about everybody looking at them going, well, you could have did a better job than that. You could have did a better job than that. I mean, I like telling everybody what I did. I do. But on these cars, eh, it's as good as I could get it. It was horrible before. Now look at it, it's much better. You know? A lot of people get it. It's always the, the ones you don't want to be friends with and their opinion don't matter worth a damn anyways. That always seem to have a voice, right? It's got scratches and stuff. I mean, it's 60 years old. Looks better than I do, and I'm not even 60. <laughs> I just look good. Is it perfect? No. We don't do perfect. We do good enough. She good enough. I know you're sick of hearing me say that, so. But there's a lot of little things in this here uh, video that deserve that being said. Just make sure I get no extra fingerprints once again since I had to take it out and touch it. Smudgy smudgies. That looks pretty good. Just a hair tacky. But good enough to go in. All right, let's see what we got. How's she looking? Well, dad nab it. That looks pretty good. Let's see if I turn it, how far are we... <laughs> yeah, I can maintain 30-ish. One big whoop. Yeah, up to 50. Smooth as a, smooth as a kitten. All right, so we'll put that back in. That's just the reverse of what we did. Get that column and the gearbox out. I don't have a lot of content, guys. I, I, I like to keep up and do it, you know, two a month. Um, I'm no different than the rest of you guys. Uh, I don't have unlimited funds and budget. I'm just sharing with you what I'm up to when I can afford to. But I'd still like to do a, a video every other week at the very least just to, to stay kind of, you know, involved in the YouTube channel. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how many of you watching know anything about being a content creator on YouTube, but you gotta have over a thousand subscribers and uh, four thousand hours watched in a in a one year period, and uh, we're nowhere near that, so we're not getting paid. We're just doing this for fun. But it'd be nice to get paid. <laughs> um, I enjoy doing it. I'm just documenting what I'm doing, anyways. Um, but all the editing and all that kind of stuff is time consuming and I'm learning something new. So if you're new to the channel or if you've watched the channel before but you haven't actually, you know, gone and subscribed, I'd appreciate it. Um, especially if it's something you're planning on watching. Subscribing and then not watching when the videos show up doesn't help me either. So, you know, subscribe and if you see a video, give it a watch. Give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you like this kind of content and maybe we'll get more people involved. Um, I'm just sharing what I got going on with you. I know it's not uh, overly exciting or over dramatic, and maybe someday if I'm getting, you know, the, the dream is to be able to do this full time and, you know, buy rundown cars to fix them up. I've, I've got about 10 cars in my head that I'd like to buy someday in my life, um, and I've got ways that I want them built. It was nice to be able to do the 84 C10 service truck because I've always wanted to build one of those and lower it. I wish I could have kept it. We did sell that, moved that one on down the road um, to finance the, the next projects and other things. But uh, it'd be nice to be able to, to finance. I mean, there's plenty of guys on YouTube doing it. Not saying that'll ever happen here. It's like winning the lottery. But that's the dream, guys, you know? And. If it never happens, it never happens. I'm still gonna 
make videos and for myself to remember every vehicle I worked on and what I did. Um, the older I get, the more vehicles I work on, the more I forget. Was that the 55 or the 56 that I did that to? Was that the, when I did that on the, that square body, was it the white one or the black one, you know? So I can have a, a record of each vehicle I'm working on and the things I've done for me. Go back, reminisce, working on them, I, I, I enjoy it. But to be able to do it and uh, make a living out of it, wouldn't that be everybody's dream? Big storm coming in, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. This old camera doesn't have a front-facing screen, so I don't know if it's pointed at me or what it's pointed at, so I have to mirror it through my phone, and we got a big storm coming in, and when the, the damn alarm went off, it made everything freeze. So I don't know if it was recording or not. Anyways, where was I? Oh, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to do the YouTube thing full time and at least, at the very, very, very least, make enough money to afford the upgrades I'm doing. Um, you know, be doing it part time with enough income coming in that uh, the projects can get done quicker around here. It's not me saving up money from other things. Um, from my regular life, but YouTube itself has money coming in and uh, That will pay for the projects I'm working on and hopefully, you know Then we can get on to the next one because we've got money coming in and you know The next project can get done and it'd be great to turn it into something full-time where I can You know do will it runs and there's Plenty of plenty of vehicles around this area that I've come across and I'm like god if I had the money love to build this thing and we could do it on a budget you know we could buy it and spend three four thousand dollars on it make a really cool rig you know dreams gotta have them otherwise what do we get out of bed for okay enough of that so if you're here you haven't subscribed please you know that button's over here somewhere no it's over there oh, a little more right there yep hit that one and then hit that like button there you go and uh, comment if you can. You know, let me know what I'm doing right. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. What I can change. I'll do my best to accommodate. But let's build a good uh, community on here of uh, like-minded gearheads. It'd be nice to have a bigger shop than this. But, you know, if this is what I got to deal with, it'd be great. It's fine. It works. It's tight. I trip a lot. But it works. So. Anyways, enough of me. Thanks for hearing me out. A few moments later. Much better, guys. Huh? Paint turned out good. Try not to get a glare on there too much, but. Much better. Chrome looks good. I can't turn the lights on because the. Uh, that's the harness for the column that we took apart over there. It goes up there, so that's all part of it. So I got no power. Once we get the uh, column back in and hooked back up, maybe I'll show you another picture of it with it all lit up. All right. One job down, now the rest. All right, just remember, guys, don't wait for your project to be perfect to enjoy it. Till next time. Thanks for stopping by.